This is the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast, the only podcast devoted to making soul music relevant again. Let's get started with your host, Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. My special, special, special guest today is a talented singer-songwriter from Southern Illinois. Her name is Christina Jones. Miss Jones, how are you doing today? Doing good. Doing real good. Thank you for having me. No problem. Um, you have a new album out um, that was just released maybe a week or so ago. It's called uh, You Are My Compass. And I love it, by the way. Um, but we're going to talk about that in a little bit, um, cause I think you have a very interesting story. Um, but before we do that, um, tell us about, for those who don't know, Christina Jones, tell us about Christina Jones. Yeah. So as he said, I'm a singer songwriter. I also consider myself a, just an overall performer. Um, right now I'm studying musical theater at Boston Conservatory. Um, I'm actually going in my last year, so that's kind of scary <laughs> um but I kind of just have been singing all of my life I've always just kind of found a place for myself on the stage whether it's just you know like parking and barking or like doing sets or playing any type of crazy role and um I've done a lot of I've done a lot of shows I've been on like American Idol I've been on I've been at uh yeah I've just always found a home for myself on the stage. Um, I've just been singing my entire life and I grew up just being a singer. Um, I mostly just sang in my church or like I sang in the school choir and stuff like that. Um, but eventually I, w I found my way on different stages and different venues. I eventually um, went on to go to be on American Idol and season I don't know why I get the seasons mixed up. Season 13 or season 16. There are so many of them. There are so many, but <laughs> I was on one of them. <laughs> but uh, I ended up making it to top 40. From there, I went to uh, Amateur Night at the Apollo Theater. That was that was a great experience. Um, and ever since then, I've just been performing i've been collaborating with a lot of people i've been singing a lot of songs and just doing my thing okay um yeah i was going to ask you more about because uh, i saw the video for your american idol audition uh but we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit uh but let me let's go back to your um your upbringing now um did you come from a family of music is your parents or your siblings into music as well or it's just you Surprisingly, no. Um, <laughs> my dad and I were really the only musical ones in the house. He was the one that introduced me to all different types of, I guess, genres of music. Um, I, I feel like he's a big part of the reason why I kind of consider myself and other people call me an old souls because I just grew up around all of this like soulful music from all these artists from long ago, or even, you know, from recent, I guess, fairly recent. I don't know if you would call it Gladys Knight or anybody recent, but, <laughs> um, but yeah, um, the house was just kind of always surrounded by music that he would play. And so music was always around um, in your household. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Was, and, um, you had mentioned before that you um, you were on American Idol, um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna get into that. I promise in a little bit. Uh, but now you said you're at the uh, the Boston Conservatory, mm -hmm. um, and let me ask you about the um, the album. You said you're going into your final semester or last My year. Senior. Why did you um, decide to? put an album out now versus say waiting till after you graduate is it I guess what I'm asking is isn't there a lot of pressure and you're getting pulled 
um, different ways. Why, why now and not, you know, a few months from now when, when you're done with school? Yeah. So, um, it was actually a recommendation from my vocal coach at the time. Um, because initially when Kimiko reached out to me, um, about her album, she really, really wanted somebody that she knew, I guess, could tell a story and and maybe deliver um yeah okay yeah okay was the um did you do any uh did you do uh all or any of the writing on this album i contributed a little bit yeah um there were some things that i would like tweak and change to kind of make my own like some like lyrical writings and um maybe like a riff here and there. Um, but most of it, of it is just Kimiko. All right. So Christina, um, you mentioned that, uh, Kimiko sought you out. Um, how did she, how was she, uh, made aware of you? Yeah. So, um, I do, I, well, I used to do a lot of things, through the school. I've done a lot of collaborations with, with students. I've done a lot of student shows and things like that. And one of the things that I did through the school, Kimiko saw, and she heard my voice and thought that I would be a perfect fit for her album. Um, when she reached out to me initially, I thought it was a scam. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Cause I get a lot of like, weird dms talking about do you want to boost your following like it's it's yeah (laughs) um but she reached out to me she told me her story and she showed me free completely free which was just like the the demo for the entire Mm. album and she asked me like what what can you do with it like what like do you want to work on it with me and I liked it. I I really liked it. And I found a lot of room to make it my own as Mm. well. So yeah. So I said, yes. Okay. Um, now is she, is she a more producer or a writer or. So she's more of a writer. She's Mm -hmm. mostly known for, um, her interpretations and renditions of Bach pieces. Um, So she comes from a very, very classical background. Um, I've heard some of the work that she's done and it's, it's absolutely amazing. Um, But she is just so meticulous about all of the details of how she wants things to sound so that every chord, every key change, every note that she writes like has a meaning to it. So that coupled with, the reason, the whole reason why she wrote the album was just so fascinating to me. Mm, okay. And so it was relatable to your personality as well, I'm assuming. Yeah. Cause I'm very, I'm very much story oriented. <laughs> I think that's why I'm studying musical theater is just because I, I love telling stories. Okay. Do you, um, and this is, um, do you, um, do you do a lot, you do a lot of acting too? Mm-hmm. Okay. So you, you do both. You sing and you act. Yeah. Okay. And is that something you want to maybe pursue further? I mean, oh, after you graduate or? Most definitely. Yeah. Um, okay. After I graduate, I intend on auditioning for musicals a lot more, auditioning for Broadway. I really want to train to act for the camera because I would love to be in TV and film as well. Um, I also have a fascination for voice acting. Um, oh. but yeah, those are, those are all things that just really, really interest me that all I really right. want to do further. Okay. So you, um, you aspire to do a lot, which is great. Yep. <laughs> I refuse to just do one thing for my entire life. <laughs> I refuse. <laughs> there you go. I get distracted too often. <laughs> I can't just do one thing. <laughs> okay. Well, congratulations and good luck with everything writing okay um yeah when i hear uh your album it's very uh um maybe sensual i guess um and obviously it's it's more on a jazz influence 
I thought, uh, which is great. Was that by design? Do you consider yourself? Well, I don't want to label you, um, but do you consider yourself a um, a jazz singer first, or you know, a pop R and B, or how would you classify what you do? This album is certainly more on the jazz side. I thought. Yeah, yeah. I would, I would honestly, if I could just pick one category, I would, I would say that it would be jazz. Um, all my life, I've just kind of always been influenced by jazz, um, whether it was old or new. Like it's just always kind of like held a place in my heart and just a place in the way that I sing. Um, there's just something about the sensuality of it that just like it just it just makes me feel alive. I don't really know how else to describe it. Okay, um, and so this album um is is it well you said you did some writing on it um uh what 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 aspects do you like about the album because i know i like the jazz aspect of it and um i I, the one song that i i really like on the album let me get the right name i don't want to mess it up free completely free um yeah yeah, that's I I like that. And maybe because it's sort of upbeat too. But mm-hmm. um what 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 do you like about the album? For me to be honest, I really like the way that the album flows like from one song to another, just the way that the I guess just the way that the songs are written and the way that they're ordered because I also think about this album in through a storyteller's perspective. Cause I mean, the album is Kimiko's story about um, a love that she lost that just completely like left her alone to deal with what she was dealing with. And it's just her journey of self growth and self love. And I think that the way that she wrote the songs, the way that they flow, the energy that each one brings, um, I really, really appreciate and I really like, um, I guess, the fluidity of it all. Okay. Um, and like we said, it was just, it was just released. Um, what are the, uh, some of the early reviews on it? How are people receiving it? Yeah, people seem to really like it. Um, I read that one person said that it really gives them like a hazy jazz club feel. Um, (laughs) I think with some songs, I I would kind of agree. Like it does kind of make me feel like I'm like sitting in the back of a jazz club vibing. (laughs) Um, But yeah, a lot of people find the songs very moving. A lot of people find the songs very inspirational. And um, I'm really, I'm, I'm honestly really, really happy and really glad that those songs can have that effect on those people because that's part of the reason why the album was written was to invoke something in people. And I'm mm. glad that it's I'm glad that it's doing the job. Yeah, you succeeded there. Uh, let's th- let's go back and talk about American Idol. I seen the uh, the video of your audition. Mm-hmm. What was that? Uh, what was that? Because ex- there's so many people who auditioned for American Idol all over the country. What was that experience like for you? Yeah, so (laughs) I think, see, I'm already like a kind of awkward person, especially if I'm like meeting someone new, especially if I'm meeting people that I look up to. Right. Um, So I think in that moment, I was 18. I had never been on a reality TV show. I had never been in front of celebrities before. I, that was like the one of the most awkward situations I think I've ever been in. Um, Not in a bad way, but just in a way of, wow, like this is actually happening. Um, I auditioned with my braces still in. Luke Bryant talked about how he thought that the rubber bands were going to snap. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. (laughs) Yeah. Um, But it was honestly a really, really great experience overall. I met a lot of really, really talented people. Um, I made friends with a lot of really talented singers and I have memories that I don't think I'll ever forget. Um, 
And I also really, really loved just performing and working with everybody because there was just such a, there was so much room for collaboration and bouncing off of other people's ideas to where it was more like, yes, it was a competition, but with most people, it felt like we were all lifting each other up rather than like, right. you know, trying to climb to the top or whatever. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just, you know, I admire people who can do American Idol or do any kind of uh, reality show or show, <clears throat> excuse me, where, uh, you know, a singing sort of competition because you know that there are like millions of people who are tuning in and I just, you look so cool under pressure. And then when I saw the braces, I said, what is she like 12? I mean, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. you have well, such a, a mature <laughs> voice. And I think that's what maybe the judges saw too, but um, yeah, you, you, you blew it away. So um, congratulations. How old were you um, during that competition? I was, I think I had just turned 18, like a few wow. months before. Um, I was still in high school. Like I was going into my, my final semester of high school. Um, it was funny cause like <laughs> I told my teachers like, hey, I'm not gonna be at school for two weeks cause I'll be in LA. And they were like, great we're gonna send you all your homework that you missed. So during my downtime, when I wasn't on set, I was just doing my homework in the lobby. Um, so that was fun. Okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I was, I was a baby. Okay, was a baby. what I really like um, about your reaction, uh, because uh, most people who are, you know, when they get, when they say you're going to LA and you go, meet your family, you know, outside, they're like jumping up and down and you were just so cool. You just show them the little card and, you know, on to the next. I was like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I think a lot of times, like, I think a lot of times it gets, some things get so overwhelming for me that I can't really show what's going on in my mind. Mm. Cause in my mind, I was, <laughs> all sorts of things were happening. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. I, yeah. It was, it was kind of deceptive. <laughs> the yeah. Way well, you, pl you played it off cause you was just so, so cool. And I was like, wow. Like you almost, <laughs> like you almost reacted like this is where I should be. You know, there's no sense of me getting up, getting all excited. This is where I'm supposed yeah. to be. Well, see, but, it's, um, really quite, it's funny because I didn't feel that at the time. Mm. it's funny because like i i honestly i can look back we'll continue our episode after this message are you looking for a reliable way to transfer money to family and friends check out the cash app it's safe easy and convenient just download the app from the apple or google play store and start receiving and sending money in a few minutes sign up today and receive five dollars and don't forget to use our referral code bgrc wqx Swag at shop.bringbacksoulmusic.com. Now, back to our conversation. Now, and say that I wasn't ready, and I know why I wasn't ready. But looking back, I remember it going through my head of like, wow, they picked me. I don't know why, but they picked me. <laughs> um, so after that, it was kind of just a battle of telling myself hey i belong here All so right. you had you had uh you had doubts oh yeah did you really oh oh yeah there <laughs> okay. were a lot of times yeah there were a lot of times where i thought like oh i'm gonna get sent home i'm gonna oh i'm gonna get sent home the, like the, the competition wasn't even going on i'm like oh, i'm gonna say i'm gonna get sent home um uh, because i don't belong and i think part of the reason was because i felt like i wasn't being myself enough Oh, um, explain that. What, what does that mean? Yeah. So I think at that time, it just when you're in high school in general, that's a time where you're still figuring yourself out. And I think that because I was so young and because I didn't know who I was yet, there wasn't much for me to show. 
And so I felt like every time I would step in front of the camera and they would ask me questions and they would like, you know, elaborate on like my pro my mindset and like what was going on and things like that. I didn't really know what to do. I didn't really know how to react like mm -hmm. me. I didn't really know how to do it. <laughs> um, and even Lionel Richie, when I got sent home, told me that I was a flower that hasn't blossomed yet, but I just need to wait until I blossom and then try again, maybe try again later to do something like this. And looking back, I, I really agree with him. Um, I definitely think that I have grown a lot, especially going to college right after that and being on my own and learning about how I navigate the world and how I navigate my own career and my own path and my own life. Mm -hmm. um, I, I can say with confidence that he, that he was, he was right. And I think that I'm still blossoming. I still don't really know a lot of who I am. And I think that I'm figuring it out day by day. Um, but I know that I am closer than when I was, when I was 18. Okay. Okay. I tend to believe that um, every experience is a good experience. It's, it's a matter of what you take from it. And so, yeah, you may have been young, but you have that experience now to draw on, you know, mm -hmm. and you wouldn't have that had you not tried. So that's just one more bit of experience that you have under your belt that other people may not have. You know what I mean? Oh, so, yeah. yeah. So whether or not you made it or not, or it's it still was a learning experience for you so you know <laughs> kudos to that so um now did you get the uh, the ticket tape parade when you returned back home from american idol how did that <laughs> the city gave you the key to the city or <laughs> um it was it was pretty I'm not going to say that it was mild, like it wasn't, it wasn't like people threw me a parade and stuff, but I, people were proud of me. Like I would get people from my hometown that I've never met before just come up to me and go, Hey, you're the girl from American Idol. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get a picture? You know, um, local newspaper wrote about me and, you know, Panther beat, which was like, <laughs> the news station at my school like did a segment on me um and it was really it was pretty exciting like it was it was nice to get that support from from back home yeah absolutely absolutely all right so um uh i guess because we're in this um well are you are you performing at all i mean i know some places you can some you can't are yeah. you doing any kind of live performing anywhere um I did do a couple live streams earlier in the year, like in March, I had a live stream in New Hampshire. Then I had another live stream this June in New York. Um, but even those, like, they were, they were very much like social distance. Everybody who wasn't singing had to wear a mask. Like, yeah um it's, so it's still it's still kind of weird performing live but yes i i have performed live i'm gonna be performing again um in october in boston because i i ended up booking um rocky horror picture show as janet mm. so i'm gonna be doing i'm gonna be doing that in october that's gonna be really fun um but it is it is weird going back to live performances after being in your house for a year. Yeah, I agree. Um, during this time, I know you're in school. Um, are you getting much writing done um, for the next project? Yeah. Um, it's kind of hard to say because sometimes I'll be sitting and I'll have so many ideas. And then there are other times where I just I got nothing. So most of the time I'm writing poetry more than I, more so than when I'm writing songs. And I think okay. that that's what comes easiest for me is writing poetry. Um, so I don't really have any like projects per se coming up, but I do have, do have a few poems coming out 
may may write a book one day. Who knows? <laughs> okay. So, um, I can, uh, yeah, I was, see, everything I want to ask you is, uh, is surrounded by performing, but because of this global pandemic we in or we're in, um, <laughs> it's kind of yeah. hard to, I guess there's no, uh, there's no certainty right now. Um, so tell people how they can reach out to you, um, via social media. Yeah. So you can follow me on Instagram. My at my you can follow me on Instagram. My handle is at Christina Jones official. You can also find me on Facebook, which is just my name, Christina A. Jones. Um, and you can also follow me on TikTok. My username there is underscore Christina Jones. And you can also check me and my new album out on my website, which is www.christinajones.com. All right, beautiful. And uh, we'll have um, all of Christine, uh, Christine's, uh, Christina links uh, in the show notes and also on our website at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Uh, Miss Jones, I thoroughly enjoyed your album. Um, Thank you. And I, and I really recommend that people get if you want to hear uh, up and coming new artists who are uh, doing some, some beautiful music. Let me ask you a quick question though. What do you, um, your, um, you know, college, and you had all this experience, um, Apollo, American Idol. What kind of advice would you give um, a young artist who is um, considering following in the same path you are? What kind of advice would you give them? I think that I would tell them what my mama always tells me whenever I get really nervous stepping into something, which is just do it afraid. Um because at the end of the day, you never really know whether or not you're going to mess up. You never know whether or not it's going to be a success or a failure, but you're never going to know unless you try. There you so go. Just do it afraid. Okay. Dive right in. There you go. Wise words indeed from Christina Jones. Miss Jones, I really enjoyed our conversation today. I really enjoyed it too. Good. And uh, keep us posted on what's going on with you. Absolutely, I will. And good luck with school and graduate and do all that other good stuff. Thank you so much. All right. That's Christina Jones on the Bring Back Soul Music podcast, and we'll be right back. Calling all lovers of soul music. The time to make soul music relevant again is now. You've been listening to the Bring Back Soul Music podcast with Todd Woodson. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure to tell a friend. Make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing to our newsletter at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Well, that's our show for today. I'd like to thank my special guest, Miss Christina Jones. You can find out more about Christina on her website at christinajones.com. Don't forget, you can listen to the Bring Back Soul Music podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and Pandora. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Bring Back Soul Music TV. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at comments at bringbacksoulmusic.com. I'm Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining us. See you next week.